So what made H.R. Puffin stuff so incredibly far out? Huh. Let's find out. Movies. Music and Monsters. Okay, I know this is kind of a departure from my normal sci-fi videos, but believe me, I just couldn't help myself. <sighs> H.R. Puffin stuff, one of my all-time favorites as a kid. But before we get started, I want to let everybody know about all the videos I've got coming up. What happened to Tobor the Robot, Logan's Run, Galactica 1980, Space Academy, Buck Rogers, Space 1999, Land of the Giants, The Time Tunnel, Saturn 3, Silent Running, all coming up, so stay tuned. So, H.R. Puffin Stuff, like many other shows, only lasted one season and ran for only 17 episodes. It's really funny how some of the best and most beloved TV shows back in the day only got one season. Now, this show, along with tons of other shows, were the brainchild of Sid and Marty Croft. And this wasn't just a show, it was an entire world. I mean, where else can you get a magical diamond-studded flute that talks? A house with a cold that sneezes? And an evil castle with a really bad sense of humor? This show, like a lot of the classic shows, had a very familiar theme. You're lost? Get home. Sid and Marty Croft. These guys just ruled Saturday morning children's television with such incredible classic shows like Sigmund and the Sea Monster, Land of the Lost, Far Out Space Nuts, The Bugaloos, Lizville, and so many more. But how exactly did Puffin Stuff get started? Well, it all started at the Hemisphere 1968 World Fair in San Antonio, Texas. The Croft Brothers had a show there which featured a larger-than-life puppet of a dragon. But his name wasn't Puffin Stuff at that time. He was Luther. This character was so popular in that show at the fair that they started thinking, hmm, there might be something more to this. So they went back home, redesigned the character, gave him a new name, and ta-da! Puffin Stuff was born. Well, the first thing was the title of Puffin Stuff. The most popular song right now is Puff the Magic Dragon. And that is where... You know, we actually took that title from... Well, technically, it's HR Puffin Stuff. And do you know what the HR actually stands for? According to Marty Croft, it stands for Royal Highness Backwards. So, after creating a whole ton of puppets and characters for their Banana Splits Adventure Hour, Sid and Marty Croft were approached to do their own Saturday morning children's show by NBC. As the story ideas began to develop, Sid Croft was invited by a friend of his to view an early screening of the movie adaptation of Oliver. And that's where he found Jimmy, Jack Wilde. Kind of interesting and just a little bit bizarre, Marty Croft, because Jack Wilde was a minor, flew him over from the UK and basically acted as his guardian through all of the filming of Puff and Stuff. <laughs> Later on, Marty, who had two daughters at the time, did admit that having Jack live with him during that time might have been a mistake. But the thing that made it so special for me was the fact that the it wasn't really a big uh, cast. It was quite a small one, and it was really one big happy family. And the best way to describe that is the fact that the camaraderie between us all, it was very much like the Three Musketeers, you know, all for one and one for all, or whatever that, you know, saying was. But it was historic in the fact that this was the first independent, live-action, life-size puppet TV show ever created for children's television. The show was shot at Paramount, but all those cool shots of Jimmy running through the forest with the flute at the beginning, well, that was shot at Big Bear Lake in California. 
kind of interesting. The show was not originally going to have a laugh track, but the network, of course, went to them and said, you know, if you don't have a laugh track, the children won't know when to laugh. Wow. Okay, so they added a laugh track. (laughs) Knock it off. This is interesting, and I'm not really sure this had ever happened before, but while they were filming the TV show, Universal Studios, along with Kellogg's, which sponsored the show, said, hey, how about a major theatrical motion picture? Yep, sounds like a good idea. They already had all the props, the costumes, and the actors, so they went for it. The movie isn't called Puffin Stuff. It's actually called Puffin Stuff Zaps the World. Very 60s. The Beatles, Brian Epstein, who managed the Beatles, we sent a a 16 millimeter film of Puffin Stuff to him in London every week because the Beatles wanted to watch the show. Now, Puffin Stuff was a genuine full-time Hollywood star, but it was the amazing breakout cast that really set this show apart from other shows on TV at the time. This show would not have been anything if it weren't for Witchy Poo, whose real name is actually Wilhelmina W. Witchy Poo. I wonder what the W of her middle name stands for. I don't know. Lines are open. You decide. So, when it came down to casting the role of Witchy Poo, there were only two actresses that tried out for the part. One was Penny Marshall. I'm not sure I could see her in that part, and the producers didn't either. (laughs) The second person to come in was the incredibly talented stage actress, Billy Hayes. She wanted the part so bad, she jumped up on a table and let out her very famous Witchy Poo screech. It's no fun when it's this easy. It worked. She got the part immediately. Sid and Marty just said, do it the way you think it should be done. So we had freedom, which is wonderful. Witchy Poo can do or say anything and get away with it. The character of Witchy Poo is considered one of the most classic villains in television history. And I can't say I disagree. It's really kind of cool that as they were developing the main characters' voices, they had the voice actors model the characters after famous people from the time. The voice of Puffin Stuff was modeled after Paul Lynn. Dr. Blinky was obviously W.C. Fields. Judy the Frog was Judy Garland. And Dr. Blinky's talking skull was clearly Boris Karloff. Kind of cool. Of course, you had the extremely talented young Jack Wilde as Jimmy. A guy named Lenny Weinrib did the voice of Puff and Stuff. But I think Stupid Bat was always my favorite. I don't know why. He was just so stupid. And Freddy the Flute was voiced by Joan Gerber. Speaking of Freddy the Flute, this is quite an interesting topic. Keep in mind, he was just a puppet. The main hero, Freddy, that the actors would hold was Rubber and had a mechanism in the mouth to open it and close it. And a line would run down through the puppet to a little lever that you would hold. And when you would press down the lever, the mouth would open. This would be run by either off-crew camera people or a lot of times Jack Wilde himself. Now, despite what a lot of people think, there was more than one Freddy the Flute. There were tons of them for all different purposes. There was the main hero, Freddy. There was one as a puppet that would crawl along the ground, kind of like an inchworm. There was one that was used to squeeze water out of him. And then there were those that I called the background Freddies, which were just solid, probably resin that didn't move, didn't do anything. But these were the Freddies that got tossed around, thrown around, or used in special effects shots. But what happened to Freddy Flute? Well, sadly, the ones that were made of rubber, they rotted away. I have one photo, and I think it's from way back in 2007, of a guy with the actual hero, Freddy. But as you can see, the rubber has just deteriorated, and as of now, in 2024, it's probably completely gone. Or if it does exist, I don't know where it is today or what shape it's in. I do know that some of the background Freddies did survive. In fact, there was this big hullabaloo years ago that 
Freddie was stolen. This is disturbing. Freddie Flute of the HR Puff and Stuff TV series has been kidnapped. And Sid and Marty Croft put out this big reward for anybody who had stolen Freddie to please bring him back. Well, somebody eventually brought him back. But again, this was just one of the solid background Freddies. And if there's anybody out there who wants to own an official replica, well, you can. The official replica of Freddy is pretty good. I mean, they got the basic design right, but if anybody wants one that actually looks like Freddy from the show, you can find them. They're out there. Just Google it and dive in. And the toys. Don't forget about the cool Puffin Stuff toys. We had lunch boxes, rings, puppets, comic books, records, and in my opinion, the ultimate Puffin Stuff toy, the Kellogg's Malloway Premium Freddy the Flute. Yes, that's right, for only 50 cents, you can own Freddy the Flute. And I did, and still do. Ah, the hours of running through the woods with my big old plastic Freddy. Okay, that sounded weird. Now, like all Hollywood productions, Puffin Stuff wasn't without its legal disputes. Singer-songwriter Paul Simon sued the Croft brothers because he claimed that the main Puffin Stuff theme was a rip-off of his song, Feelin' Groovy. I don't know. I just don't hear it. But Paul Simon took it to court and he won. Then there's the big legal dispute with McDonald's. McDonald's had just started this whole McDonald land thing, and a lot of the characters did look suspiciously like characters from Puff and Stuff. So the Croft brothers sued McDonald's, took that to court, and it was settled out of court. Then in 1973, there was this really cool live event at the Hollywood Bowl called HR Puff and Stuff and the Brady Kids. Interesting combination. Then, after only one season, it was canceled. But why? Honestly, I don't know. I could not find any information regarding the cancellation of Puff and Stuff. It just sort of ended. But if you know, let me know. So, 1969 came and went, and Puff and Stuff was gone, but not forgotten. It's ranked by TV Guide as one of the top 25 classic cult shows of all time. And deservedly so. Interesting that in the year 2000, Sony Pictures started developing a remake, but that was dropped. Then in 2008, Sony again reannounced that they were going to do something with Puffin Stuff. And that was dropped. Sadly, in 2008, we lost the very talented actor Jack Wilde to cancer. He was young when he died, in his 50s, but he lived a very, very troubled life. So rest in peace, Jimmy. Billy Hayes passed away in 2021 at the ripe old age of 96. And we also just lost Marty Croft in November of 2023. Puff and Stuff and some of the characters actually did get a bit of a revival recently, I think within the last three or four years, on a new type of Puff and Stuff show that revolved mostly around a dog, Puffin Bark or something. <laughs> Howdy! Hi! And, like it or hate it, H.R. Puff and Stuff did lead the way for one of my absolute favorite Croft shows, Land of the Lost, but... That, my friends, is the topic of another video. I really hope you enjoyed that brief retrospect on HR Puff and Stuff. And if you like this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing to the channel. I've got a lot of great new videos on the way. As always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I will do my best to try to answer them for you. And please feel free to stop back anytime as we continue our conversation on movies, music, and monsters. Movies, music, and monsters.